Hi, my name is Ole, and today I'll show how to use and set up the first beta release of the Alfresco SDK 2.0 with Eclipse. The first thing we need to do is to download and install the latest version of Maven from maven.apache.org. You'll need version 3.2.2 or later. Once Maven is installed, we need to download Eclipse. Go to eclipse.org and click the download button. Here you'll need to download the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. If you already have Eclipse installed, you need to make sure that you have the M2E and M2E-WTP plugins installed. The last thing we need is Spring Loaded. This agent enables us to reload Java classes without restarting. Go to github.com slash springprojects slash springloaded, scroll down the page and download the jar. Let's start Eclipse and create our first project. Go to File, New, Maven Project, click Next, then click the Configure button in the top right corner. Click Add Remote Catalog, then enter the URL for Maven Central's Archetype Catalog and enter a description. Select all catalogs from the catalog dropdown and enter org.alfresco in the filter. Here we can select which project we want to generate. Select Alfresco AMP archetype to generate an Alfresco AMP project. Click Next and enter your group name and artifact ID, then click Finish to create your project. If Eclipse says there's a Maven problem in the Markers tab, it's because Eclipse is missing a plugin. Right click the problem and click Quick Fix. Select Discover New M2E Connectors and click Finish. This will bring up a dialog where you can install the missing plugins. Follow the instructions on the screen and restart the clips if necessary. The project is now imported and we need to set up a run configuration to start up Alfresco. Go to Run and click Run Configurations. Select Maven Build and click the new icon in the top left corner. Give this configuration a name, let's call this Alfresco. For the base directory we select the root of the AMP project. For goals we input integration test and profiles we do AMP to war. Now click the JRE tab. Here we need to give Alfresco some additional memory and set up the path for spring loaded. Make sure that the path for spring loaded is set correctly, otherwise Alfresco will not start. Click run and wait until Alfresco has started up. After a while you should see starting protocol handler in the console. This means that Alfresco is up and running. The Alfresco AMP archetype comes with a sample web script. Go to localhost port 8080 slash alfresco slash service slash sample slash hello world to see it. This is a JavaScript based web script, so let's make a small change to it, save the file and reload to see the result. Notice that the changes are picked up right after we saved the file. We did not refresh web scripts or restart Alfresco. This is one of the core features of the SDK 2.0. You can change server-side JavaScript, free market templates, JSP, CSS, and client-side JavaScript without restarting or refreshing web scripts. The Alfresco SDK supports running unit tests against a running Alfresco repository. Let's run the included sample unit test from Eclipse. Right-click the unit test, run as, and click JUnit test. The first time you run a unit test, it takes 8 to 10 seconds. After that, they run instantly. We now see that all tests passed. Great. Let's make a new test that fails, then rerun the test and see the result. Okay, so let's make test that this fails and assert that 1 equals 2. So now let's try and run it and see what happens. And now we should see an exception. Yeah and the test did fail. The SDK 2.0 now supports hot reloading Java code with Spring Loaded. Here I create a Java based web script that returns a JSON string. We create a class and put some logic in there to output the JSON string. We define the bean. And create the XML descriptor.
One limitation of the SDK 2.0 is that we can't change or introduce new beans without restarting. So now we have to restart Alfresco to get the new bean registered. Here we see the output from our new rep script. Let's change the Java class, save the file and see what happens. Eclipse will automatically compile the class and Spring Loader will be sure to pick the changes up. In case you did not believe your own eyes, let's try and change the class again. Creating a share project is exactly the same process as we did with Alfresco. Go to File, New and select Maven Project. Click Next, enter org.alfresco in the filter and select Share AMP Archetype. Enter a group ID and artifact ID and click Finish to create the project. Now we need to create a run configuration to start up Shear. Go to Run, click Run Configuration. Create a new Maven build, let's name this one Shear. Select the root of the MyShare AMP project as the base directory. For goals we enter integration test and profiles we do AMP to war. In the JRE tab we need to define the path for spring loaded. We do not need to give memory settings as Shear does not use as much memory as Alfresco does. Click apply and run to start up Shear. The Shear AMP project is configured to run on port 8081. We can see Shear running on localhost port 8081 slash Shear. The project comes with a sample iCow page and a widget. You'll find this on slash Shear slash page slash HTTP slash WS slash sample dash page. Let's change the title of the page and remove the class from the logo to make it a bit bigger. Then we save the file and see the changes in the browser. Once again we see that the changes are picked up, we do not have to restart or refresh web scripts or clear any caches. Let's try and change the iCow widget and see the changes being picked up. Notice that this is client-side JavaScript and it's picked up immediately. We can also add new web scripts and iCow pages on the fly without restarting. This works only for JavaScript based web scripts and we have to refresh web scripts manually to register it. So here we create a copy of the existing iCow page and just rename the files and give it a new URL. Then we have to go in and refresh web scripts manually. Let's change the new iCow page so it only includes the sample widget. Now we need to register the new web script. This is done from slash share slash service slash index. Click the Refresh Web Scripts button. Notice that the number of registered web scripts increased. This means that our web script has been registered. Let's try to see the new page. If you see an empty page, you have to refresh the page twice. Now we can change the title of the page just to verify that reloading still works. To create an all-in-one project, go to File, New and select Maven Project. Click Next and enter org.alfresco in the filter. Select the all-in-one archetype and click Next. Enter a group ID and artifact ID and click Finish to create the project. Now we need to create a new run configuration. Go to Run, Run Configurations and create a new Maven build. Let's call this one All-in-One. For the base directory, we need to make sure to select the root of the project, which will be all in one. For goals, we input install and profiles, we do run. Click the JRE tab and input the memory settings and the path to spring loaded. Once again, it's important that the path for spring loaded is set correctly, otherwise Alfresco will not start up. Click run to start Alfresco. Now we see that Alfresco is started, so let's try the included sample web script. Let's try and make some changes to the web script to make sure that everything is reloaded. Shear is included in the all-in-one project, so let's have a look at the sample iCow page. We change the title, we change some of the widgets, Let's try and change the widget template as well.
and we change the widget itself. So let's have a look at our changes. The title is changed, the widgets are changed, and if we bring up the web console, we should see our console.log, and there it is. Please remember that this is a beta release, so if you run into any bugs or any problems, please raise an issue on GitHub. Thanks for watching.